A story for you now in the characteristic manner of the popular Scotchman, Will Fife. I belong to Glasgow, dear old Glasgow town. <laughs> you know, this program wouldn't be complete without a representative of that wee bit of heather-covered land, Scotland. Today is the day. We're doing something for a great occasion, the visit of our king and queen to your country. True, as they were nearing these shores, the reception was a wee bit cold, owing to the icebergs they encountered. But the warmth of their reception in America would melt all the icebergs in the Atlantic. Well, here I am, a Scotchman in Hollywood. They tell me it's a wonderful place. I hope to see it one of these days. You see, I only go from the hotel to the studio and from the studio to the bank and then back to the hotel again. <laughs> you know, they tell a lot of stories against we Scotch people about our generosity. But all those stories are wrong. A Scotchman spends as much of his own money as anybody else spends of it for him. Here, was it not a Scotchman who gave the biggest prize in the history of sport? Do you remember that? He offered $20,000 to the first man that could swim the Atlantic? Underwater? <laughs> eh? Well, there's one thing you must admire about we Scotch people. We don't mind a joke against ourselves. It doesn't cost us anything, so we don't bother about it. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Just before I came on the air, Ronald Coleman gave me a cigarette. It was one of these cork-tipped things. <coughs> They're terrible. As soon as the cork starts to burn, it seems to upset my throat somehow. <laughs> you know, I like a cigar best, don't you? You know, the best cigar I ever had in my life was given to me ten years ago by the mayor of Los Angeles. It was a Corona Corona. Uh, it was a beauty. I sometimes bring it out now on a Sunday and have a puff at it. I remember once a Scotch friend of mine, McGregor, who was invited by an Englishman to spend a week with him in London. When he was leaving, the Scotchman says, You've treated me wonderful. When I get back to Scotland to my farm... I'm going to send you a chicken at Christmas time. Well, the chicken didn't arrive. The next time they met in London, the Englishman said to McGregor, uh, By the by, McGregor, old fellow, you, uh, you didn't send me that chicken you promised me. Oh, said McGregor, did you not hear about it? It got better. <laughs> now, you know, you take a trip to Scotland, you'll find these stories are all wrong. Well, it'll not be long before I'm sailing home to Bonnie, Scotland again, and if I can raise the fare, I may return again to Hollywood. Good luck to you all, good health, and the grateful thanks of a loyal Scot for America's real American welcome to our King and Queen. <laughs> <laughs>